after several months of good action on the market in the last couple of days uh, the market has hit little bit of turbulence so let's have a quick look at the market update basically if you look at like uh, the nyc see this was the big move which happened uh, for almost like uh, two years the market was going up since then it's been just sideways if you look at this this is basically a sideways market it's been going sideways okay in a range bound manner so that's nothing surprising about that uh, the nasdaq composite if you see again like it had this big move here from 2017 to 2018 that is after the trump election the market started going up and it kept on going up and now uh, for a couple of months it had this sideways move it had started going up and then it has pulled back a little as of now it is still a little bit of a pullback okay um, so that's the this is the nasdaq 100 which is more in line with the nasdaq uh, composite to the uh, to t2108 which is a very good indicator if you know how to use it basically at extremes it is very useful on a day-to-day -day basis it doesn't tell you anything but like when it reaches extremes uh, and you will see that you look at uh, the extremes here was around uh, 73 75 anything about 70 is like and uh, you have to uh, look at it like say here it was like uh, around here like uh, around 72.65 if you see here uh, 72.65 and then so zones above 70 are from where like there are pullbacks and zone below 10 uh, are very good opportunities in fact in a zone below 20 are very good opportunities anytime the breadth goes below 20 that's when you should try and get invested in your 401k so that's uh, as far as this t2108 which had reached extreme level so uh, this market correction started with no surprise because if you look at any of the uh, indicators in, including the um, uh, market monitor you will see that it had reached extreme and i'll show you the market monitor in few minutes uh, tna which is a uh, basically the IWM equivalent again it made a high and then pulled back a little bit T2107 which is number of stocks which are about 200 day moving average and it really didn't go to the extreme like here it was at this stage was around 66 percent I think and since then like the number of stocks participating in the rally hasn't been very high uh, it's hovered around 50 to 60 percent basically after going down a lot all the breadth indicators are very useful only at extreme on a day-to-day -day basis not much uh, S&P 500 again the same thing happening here a big move after the election for almost two uh, one and a half years two years and then just a sideways move basically it's a you'll see that uh, there are like an a uh, every time it has pulled back there have been buyers IWM this was the index which was leading the action if you see like uh, basically um, it was the one which in the last couple of months leading the action and that is why you will see that a lot of small stocks were making big moves so that's why you had a lot of these IPOs making very big moves and uh, things like that TQQ which is the top 100 stocks uh, thing same as the NDX basically SPX sell similar to this is just like triple ETF which I monitor basically so uh, and Dow Jones again you will see that the same thing here it made a big move from this period to this period and now just being choppy sideways move so overall like and it's just a range which uh, and the market has gone back into range it was trying to break a little bit of the range and then it has gone back into the range let's have a quick look at the market monitor to see what indicators were available to you to know that you look at something like this might be uh, hap going to happen and if you remember last week somewhere around uh, wednesday or uh, so if you remember last week uh, sometime around uh, this period uh, i made a tweet saying you look at be careful because uh, or the market is extremely bullish and how do I know that the market was extremely bullish? If you study this 
and uh, uh, this is not a video where i'm going to get into, into details of that that is basically a subject by itself and uh, you can see my previous videos on that topic but anytime breadth reaches extremes if you see study these figures they seldom go about 20 so whenever it goes about 20 it is telling you something and if you see last time also it went about 20 and the period was followed by uh, correction in the market so uh, periods about 20 indicates uh, or when more than 20 stocks are up 50 percent plus in a month that tells you that there is extremely bullish uh, breadth uh, in the short term and that typically leads to a correction within few days it's not as if like the day it goes about 20 next day you get a correction no within couple of days to weeks you get a correction like here it remained elevated for some time and then like you got a big shake out kind of a move again like in here it remained elevated for some time and then there was an uh, here like there's a little bit of shake out not much and then like it took some time it again went up about 20 and now you see that there has been a uh, selling so uh, if you really want to use breadth uh, really, uh, try and understand that breadth is very useful in extremes and you have to create uh, breadth measures which will capture extremes like this is one which has worked very well in the last five to six years whenever this readings go about 20 it tells you to be cautious so as a result of this uh, uh, i was very cautious coming in uh, last week itself and uh, i don't have any uh, may, uh, means there is no damage to the account i was up coming in here at around 55 percent and i'm still up 55 uh, percent for the year uh, so it doesn't really affect me this correction uh, if you were not ready you would have given up a lot of uh, profits and if you're uh, drinking a lot of kool-aid about like stocks will just keep going up or uh, you should hold for a longer term and all you would have given up a lot of profit on leading stocks like netflix and all um, so that's like you know, one of the things the other things you have to look at is like you know, one of the things like this breadth extremes which you have to always keep an eye on is ipos okay if you saw a uh, couple of days ago there's a uh, or a couple of weeks ago there were crazy moves happening on ipos ipos were like an a uh, doubling tripling uh, so many ipos had made like and if you see here like uh, or like and i say even better if i just add a indicator here uh, saying um, and let's say write a new formula and uh, see by C40. So this is just like uh, in 40 days uh, what kind of moves uh, uh, some of the uh, you know, IPOs made and if you look at that as a uh, indicator and you will see that like they were like crazy moves okay uh, and always remember when you get crazy moves in IPOs that is always tends to happen not at the beginning of a, a move it happens just before um, a correction like you'll see this particular ipo went up like an 350 percent okay uh, solid buy science again like an it went up around 500 percent or agmh in three or four days it made a big move or like codex or iq iq like uh, tripled or almost went up like an uh, from 17 dollars it went to 45 or for so those are the kind of moves which you get uh, late in the stage late in the sense st stage in the sense where when momentum is very red hot and that tells you okay look and i uh, yes the, see the thing is as a momentum trader you have to profit from that move but it's always as a momentum trader you have to always remember okay look and I, you don't want to be the last person to be out uh, you want to be be proactively out of these kind of moves and not start drinking the kool-aid uh, thinking that okay, these kind of moves will continue forever like in fact and I, you should uh, your antenna should be up when you see like crazy moves happening in ipos uh, and that tends to happen just before like uh, some sort of a shake out or a market correction okay uh, so overall now basically uh, there has been on individual stocks there has been a lot of damage but overall the indexes have like uh, just pulled back uh, into the range and they are as of now range bound uh, now stocks which have broken down on high volume in the recent days those are the one to watch like uh, those are the one which are likely to have further downside so um, this is something which i like and i look at like basically us common stocks adr etf and i'm looking for anything which is down eight percent plus 
on a 9 million plus volume in the last 90 days because those are the stocks to look at basically for something if there is like any further downside in the market those are the one which might be the one which will start leading the downside especially the one which are going up a lot and which had a recent uh, breakdown so there are uh, you can create a watch list and start monitoring some of those stocks but as of now it still remains to be seen whether this is a major correction uh, or likely major correction for the reason that the bread really didn't move when you want to like and really you start getting a sell off or like a, so you get readings like this like and there is no 300 plus reading as of now this is what will tell you that look there is a big selling 431 881 664 so as of now this is like pin pricks kind of selling 204 stocks around 128 stocks so so overall as of now i would say that you look at the over um, enthusiastic buying which is happening in ipos and number of stocks of 20% is getting corrected to a more normal level of breadth that was an abnormality and the example which i always given many times in the boot camps and all is that if you are sitting by the side of the sea shore and you see normal waves coming in and the normal waves are like 6 inches to 1 feet and they are normal part of the uh, thing but suddenly you see 10 feet waves and you see 20 feet waves uh, then you need to start paying attention the same way when you get a market monitor readings above 20 okay. invariably unless you are at the start of a trend sometimes you get like in a very high reading but they are like and you know, the market is coming out of a correction and then a lot of stocks are going up in a short period of time because they have been beaten down this is the kind of thing which happens at that point of and the, but that's uh, uh, that's more like coming out of but when the market has been going up for months or weeks and then it reaches an extreme reading in and uh, along with other things like if you see here 1500 stocks were up uh, 34% uh, while the most of the time the reading is, has been lower or like in thousands kind of a thing uh, so here like also the I was watching the, uh, the breadth here and I was looking at this number 287 and I thought like you look at this number will go even lower uh, because if it had gone below 200 that would have been a really a blow up kind of a uh, situation but the market corrected even before that but overall whenever you see extreme in breadth pay attention that will save you a lot of trouble because if you were consciously looking at these numbers and anticipating likely things then you would have moved your stop you would have like and I got out of position proactively you would have been less exposed to the market versus if you're just sitting there like a duck waiting to be shot so that's the market update as of now little bit of volatility little bit of fireworks happening in the market uh, which is very good for intraday kind of trading and that is why uh, there are these other setups which have developed in recent day, um, years which are like basically uh, neutral to the market condition in the sense whether the market is going up or going down your T, um, uh, TI 30 kind of a strategy will work irrespective of what the market is doing overall because you're not really f uh, that that setup is not dependent on the market direction so that's the whole point of developing setups which are not market dependent